We live, we die. What's the purpose of life? Brother Eddie gonna show you on the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Dean Show. You have testified, you declared what's in your very nature that there is only one God, that I will not worship a man, a monkey, an elephant, an ant, a mouse. The sun, the moon, I'm not going to worship any of these things. I'm not going to worship a man or woman. I'm going to, I'm going to worship the creator of man and woman. And I'm going to obey the messenger that was sent. If I was living during the time of Jesus, I would have followed his teachings. He was the way, the truth, and the light. If I was living during the time of Moses, I would have followed his teachings. But the last and final messenger sent to mankind is the Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. You have testified to this. You've testified to it. You started to to get into establishing the prayers five times a day and you're checking into the fasting Ramadan is coming up and all the other pillars of Islam it's very simple it's rational and now there's some confusion you're asking questions there's some things you're studying but you're going to some of the masjids you're hanging around with some people who got the name tag Muslim but you're seeing that hold on I'm reading something I'm investigating Quran says this the way of the Prophet says that where are they getting this stuff home is this back home culture or is this Islam all this and more next on the Dean Show. Dean. Allah, there's only one God, and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God, and Jesus was his messenger. Allah. I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. Wa alaikum assalam. Peace be with you too. Thank you for being with us here on the Dean Show. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And we're going to get straight in the topic because the time pretty soon we'll be going to commercial break, another commercial break, and it's done, it's finished. That's right. So we're going to get straight down to business. We want to follow the way the way that has been sent down by the creator of the heavens and earth so do those sincere and humble people i just want you to be able to show how many other of the different people who had a messenger and then they started to follow back home cultures and things got all mixed up and the people went astray we see it happening today you have the Quran, the verbatim word of God, and you have the Sunnah, the way, the authentic teachings of the last and final messenger. Mm -hmm. But man, now it's become like a buffet. You got this person doing this from his back home culture. This, and there's some good food and good other things in culture, and there's no problem there. So how do we differentiate what is the correct way and back home culture? Thing is that's just been created by man. Mm -hmm. Can you just briefly touch upon the history of how other generations, when they went away from the teachings of the prophets, things got out of control? and how we don't want that to happen to us today. Well, if you look in the history of how people, okay, from, from the point of view of the teaching of the Quran, the original religion of human beings was the worship of the one God, not the story that we have been given through evolution, that human beings, you know, as they evolved, they were worshiping all these different things that they were afraid of, and then, you know, as they evolved more, they, you know, started worshipping fewer and fewer gods and then they had a sky god and then eventually they have this, you know, one god and then eventually, you know, according to this logic, when we evolved enough, we realized there is no god, you know, this is their, this is their idea, but no, we believe, of course, that the first human being was Adam, that God created Adam and from Adam he created Eve and from Adam and Eve came many men and women. Yes. And the, the original religion of Adam and the children of Adam, the descendants of Adam, was monotheism, the, the worship of the one God. But it was actually amongst the people of Noah, the prophet Noah. His people were the first people to worship idols. Mm -hmm. And they did that by, it was a, really a trick of the devil, Shaitan. Yes. You know, they had amongst them some pious people those pious people died, they became really, really upset. And then they were exact, you know, they were just too much upset. And this is where Shaitan saw his opportunity. So he came to them and then he encouraged them to do something that Adam had never taught, that had never been part of the religion. He said, why don't you make statues? And why don't you make pictures of these pious people? 
and hang them in your homes and put them in your places of gathering. So when you see them, you will remember God more. So it was a new thing, it was an innovation in religion. It was not something the prophets had ever taught and it was a suggestion from the devil. But what is really interesting is that the devil suggested something that seems to be good. And what's wrong with remembering God more? You see, I see this pious person, I remember how good they were, I remember how holy they, are, they were. I get encouraged, you know, to be a more pious person. From the outside, it seems good, but of course, shaitan has a big plan. So now what happens? Now this is the devil, the, this the is satanic the devil, forces. Right. Is, no, well, no, shaitan himself. So mm -hmm. Does he is, have also his descendants? Those? He, he does, but you know, he's, shaitan is a living individual being, not a human being, but a jinn, oh, yes. which is like a spirit, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so anyway, he, but he's waiting. And what happens after generations passed, the people forgot why their ancestors had made these statues. As that's what happens after time, people forgot. And then Shaitan came to them, the devil came to them. And he said, you know why your ancestors made these statues? So that in your time of distress and need, you should go and ask these people, because they're pious people. God is not going to listen to you, you're so full of sin. So you ask these pious people, and they will take your prayers to God. They will be intercessors between you and God. And this is how people started to worship idols. And this is idolatry. This is why in Islam, worshiping saints, praying to prophets, you know, calling upon them, thinking that they will take your prayers to God, as if you have an intermediary, or, or, this is all considered to be idolatry. But the guy says, look, I mean, he says, this was a righteous man. Mm. I myself am not that righteous. All I'm doing is asking him because, look, you can make dua for me. But the, okay, the first thing is they're dead. And dead people can't hear you. So calling upon a dead person is like calling upon a brick. A brick. The dead can't hear you. The Quran says, innaka la tusmi'ul al mawt. You can't make the dead to hear. Right? In fact, Allah is giving this example, say, meaning you can't, just as you can't make dead people hear, you can't make a person who doesn't want to know the truth, you can't make them follow it. But the point is that Allah is showing the dead can't hear you, and an obstinate person who doesn't want to listen, you can't make them listen. So the dead can't hear. Calling upon a dead person, right? And I mean dead in the physical sense. Okay, they may be spiritually alive, but they are dead. They are not in this world anymore. You can't marry them, you can't do business with them, you can't trade with them, right? You know, so that you can't have a conversation with them. So it's cut off, no more. So yeah, and that's what it means, barzak. And it's, that's why we don't believe in ghosts. There's no like souls of dead people wandering around. No, the dead are in another dimension. Yes, their souls exist, but they can't hear us. Okay, so calling upon a dead person, it doesn't matter how pious they are, even the Prophet Muhammad, Jesus, Moses, doesn't matter who it is. If they, you know, they are in that other, the barzak, there is a barrier, that's a barrier. The dead can't hear the living, so calling upon them is like calling upon a brick, because they can't hear you. So the issue is, it's nothing to do with how pious they are. It's just that calling upon dead people, if the pious person was sitting right here, and I say, oh Eddie, you're such a good holy man, can you ask God? That's fine, that's no problem. You can ask a person who's living and right here if you think they're righteous. But if he's in Connecticut or in well, you Japan... Can, well, you can phone them on the phone, but right? But if you can you sit here like this no, and say... You, hey, no, because... Or they put can. a big picture in front of you and start to, you know, talk to him or no, envision him. of course, that's the same thing. That's calling upon something that can't hear you and can't help you, right? And the only one that we should call upon like that is Allah, is God, the Creator. The only one that we should call upon like that is God, because the only one who can hear you wherever you are, even if you are an ant inside a rock on the deepest part of the ocean, yeah. God can hear the call of that ant. So this is not Islam, this is some kind of culture, paganism that's crept yeah, in? Yeah, absolutely. So this is, a perfect, is this is a really good example of how people followed the way of their ancestors and following the way of their ancestors led them to commit the worst crime a human being can ever make, and that is to make a partner or a rival or an associate with God to worship something when you should only worship God. Only worship God. We'll be right back with more on the Dean Show. 
On the outside, everything looks good. You see the hundred thousand dollar cars. You see a lot of diamonds. You see a lot of females, and they think that this is, you know, this is the life. This is, this is like, you know, paradise right here on earth. It's not anyone's job to go into someone's heart and change their heart. Your job is to tell people what the truth is. And the reality of it is, while we're sitting here, while I'm sitting here constantly paying for the disease, the cure was free. We are back here on the Dean Show. You gave a beautiful example. This is in the Quran, the verbatim word of God. This example. Um, the, the, the story of Noah is in the Quran, but this, the, how the people actually came to worship idols is not in the Quran. It was mentioned uh, by Abdullah ibn Abbas, who was the cousin of the Prophet, and he was very well known for his explaining the Quran. So obviously he heard this from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is, peace and blessings be upon this is a, a beautiful example how mm. when you deviate a little bit from the game plan, the blueprint, mm. You go astray. Yeah, and then you see the thing, the people, then the people think this is religion. Yeah. They think that this is the religion. And the same thing was the case in the time of the Prophet Muhammad. You know, and in fact, if you read the Quran, you'll find all the prophets. Jesus faced the same thing. You know, there's, there's a famous, uh, well, there's, I don't know how famous it is these days, but there's, you know, there's a story in the Gospels. Yeah. Right? Tell us this, um, please. Well, the sto one of the stories in the Gospels, um, that is mentioned is about you know uh, how those people those those Pharisees and those rabbis they had taken they had made things up basically and they gave those things the weight that should only be given to the laws of God so they they the, the man-made ideas that they had the man-made concepts that they had they actually really gave them that authority as, as if those things were from God, right? So you find that this is something the, all the prophets are experiencing. They're coming to tell people, this is not the religion. This is not what God told you to do. God never commanded you to do this. But those people have supplanted the true religion that was bought with the messengers for their own man-made cultures and customs. Now, it may be that sometimes in... You see, when it, comes to, when it comes to the religion of Islam, Islam has a built-in flexibility that allows it to really be practiced just about anywhere. And so sometimes we do take into account the culture of people. Let me give you an example, right? Um, in some societies, right? Just a simple thing. What if I undid my buttons, right? Pull down the way down to my chest, or I undid my buttons and yeah. showed my chest, right? Now, in some societies and some cultures, they would look down on that and say, well, that's how bad people, you know, gangsters, they dress like that, you know, with their shirts open and yeah, so Tony on and Montana. so forth. Right, okay, whatever, right? So the point is being here is that a Muslim should not look like a gangster or a bad person, right? You should try and look respectable. But sometimes what is respectable is different from society to society. Even though the Prophet Muhammad himself used to keep his buttons open, yeah. right? But then no one considered that to be something disrespectable in that society. So you see some of those things may change from culture to culture, certain situation to situation. And these are not things that Islam has ordered this or ordered that, right? Rather, Islam has ordered us to be good, it's ordered us to be of the best character, of the best type of behavior. We can have many examples. Muslims are famous everywhere for being late. You, you want to organize a dinner, you want to organize a talk, you tell everyone we'll start at 7 o'clock, no one turns up till 8 o'clock and they don't think you're going to start till 8.30. Whereas in the West, if you tell people come at 8, you're expecting people there to be 8, maybe 5 past 8, maybe 15 past at the latest. You don't expect people to turn up an hour and a half late. It's considered really bad manners. So these things 
change from culture to culture. Now the problem is a lot of Muslims, they have adopted habits and customs and practices that are from their culture, which may be perfectly acceptable where they come from, but that doesn't mean that that's an acceptable way to behave in the West. Some of those practices may be necessary for whatever reasons. I don't know, maybe there's scarcity of food, scarcity of whatever, or I don't know, the, the different circumstances. They may even have practices that are necessary and beneficial in the land they came from, but they have no importance and relevance in, you know, in the Western context. Now the problem is, Muslims come from different countries to live in the West, and they bring their culture with them, and they think that this package they have is Islam, because Islam is such a deep part of their culture, it's so deep in their culture, they think that what they do is Islam, but it's not always the case. Now, I'll give you an example. The best example, I think, is of uh, arranged marriages. Like forced marriages? Forced marriages and arranged marriages. Now, for, now, even in some cultures, they have forced marriages, where literally a woman, even a man, it's not just a woman, yeah, yeah, yeah. the man and the woman are literally just married. They, sometimes they don't even know that they're married. They just, that's it, that's your husband, that's your wife. They have no choice, they have no say. Now, actually, from the point of view of Islamic law, this is not even considered to be valid. It's not valid because part of a marriage being considered to be valid in Islamic law is that the two people who are getting married agree to it. So this is, again, culture. It has it's nothing to do culture. with Islam. It has nothing to do with and Islam. Could, is it safe to say that Islam didn't come to eradicate all different customs of culture, no, but just the things that are bad. Exactly. It kept the good. Kept it the good. the good things. If there's a good thing in a culture, like being polite, or like being on time, or like being clean, it's not yeah. doesn't say give that up. Okay, but walking in the street right. with a thong, that's, and that's your culture, everybody's doing it. That's walking in the, no, because obviously, you know what a thong? I understand what a thong yeah. is. So yeah. if that's called, just, just an extreme, extreme yeah. example, or you're walking around in bathing suits no. in this town. Of course, the Islam has some limits, yeah. right? So what a person can do and can't do has to fit the limits of the divine legislation, yeah? God has given us a type of, you know, a type of limit that we should follow in terms of women's dress and men's dress. Right, interaction between the, the sexes, right? Yeah. There are some limits. These limits have been laid down by Allah, and you should follow those limits. But within those limits, yeah. right, you have flexibility. So right? it's dress, but as long as it's modest, well, exactly. it's okay. Open. Say, for example, a woman's dress. A yeah. woman's dress, she should, she should cover everything except her face and her hands. Yeah. And people should recognize her as a Muslim. But as long as you fulfill those conditions and the clothes are loose, it doesn't mean you have to wear the burqa like in Saudi Arabia or in Afghanistan. Even if you look at the dress of the women in Afghanistan, it's different. The veil is different in Afghanistan than it is from Saudi Arabia. So now the culture, if it's a different yeah. little style, patterns in that, that's the culture. And it's it fine. depends. You look in Nigeria, yeah. for example, okay, and they wear very colorful, very bright clothes because really probably in different cultures you will find that that is not considered to be you know, like enticing, whereas maybe in Saudi Arabia yeah. it would be. So these things are going to be, you know, are going to change from time to time and place to place. But the basic rule is, when a woman is out in Islam, she should only show her face and her hands. If she wants to cover her face, that's good. She can do that if she wants. Now, you gave an example, forced marriages, arranged marriages is different. But, I want to introduce yeah. you, your son, to my daughter and see if they like yeah. each other under supervision. Arranged marriages are a normal, again, it's part of the culture. Yeah. In Muslim countries that follow the religion, the sexes tend to be quite segregated. You know, they don't really mix. They don't yeah. go mix at school. They don't mix at university. They don't. The limited mixing in the workplace, even in the marketplaces. You know, so the segregation is protect there. from promiscuity. <clears throat> and, oh, okay, and there's reasons for it. We yeah. don't want to go into that. But the point is, is that and there are good reasons for it. Yeah. But that is the sort of normal pattern. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. So how does a boy meet a girl? The only way ultimately you meet and get married is through family and through friends because practically that's the only way to do it. Yeah. Does that mean if a Muslim girl in Canada, for example, or in, in the States, yeah, goes to university and a Muslim boy and they meet each other and you know, they talk and they get to like each other, you know, is that necessarily, uh, you know, does that mean that this marriage is not allowed because it wasn't arranged? No, people can meet each other, they can like each other, but obviously they need to follow the limits of Islam, which means 
the girl, the, she, the man should go and seek permission to marry this girl from her father, normally her father, but whoever her guardian is, and she should get his permission, and the marriage should be done according to the rules in Islam. Okay, so they should agree, there should be witnesses, the father should witness. Okay, so as long as those things are there, and as long as they're meeting and talking with each other is not leading them to, you know, things that are forbidden in Islam, then okay, that's a different culture. We live in a different yeah. culture in the West. So we explained that, and then forced marriage is forcing a woman to marry someone. <clears throat> this is or a man. It's not only man, by the way women. Man. So this Some is people think it's only women get forced. No, okay. men Give get me just small examples. Well. The man, before we go to break, we want to hit this mm -hmm. point. Now, sometimes they see the Muslim, and they see the Muslim man up front, and the woman's 20 feet behind them, and they say, what is this? Have you okay, heard? Okay, I'll simply explain it. In Muslim countries, not all of them, but in some cultures, the man walks ahead, because there are other men walking when they come they greet each other right and so the wife stays behind because it's nothing to do with her whether this man is meeting that man right yeah. so he just stands in front from the point of view of this is what anyway this is what my wife explained to me yeah right you know but if you, you but you don't find that for example in the time of the prophet the prophet so awesome would walk with his wives even sometimes it's reported they would hold each other's hands you know these type of things so you might be amazed when you go back to reading the actual life of the Prophet and what happened in that time that some things that Muslims in certain cultural contexts you know they don't practice those things I give you another example yeah. you know for example in uh, in Pakistani culture some Pakistani culture you know the idea of a man and woman seeing each other naked is even a husband and wife even a husband and wife in something they don't even see each other naked it's like but the Prophet Muhammad and Aisha used to take showers together they used to take you know they used to wash together yeah right and they even used to fight with each other to take the water so again right? another perfect example culture and culture islam culture and islam so right? separate this and yeah. come to the so but that's fine if that's your culture yeah. you, you don't i'm not going to say you know you can't have that type of behavior but don't tell everyone that this is islam and don't make everyone think that this is the right way to behave yeah. because your culture is not the criterion. The behavior of the Prophet Muhammad and his companions, that is the criterion, not your culture. Let's take a break. We'll be right back with more on the Dean Show. Hay solo un Dios. Adoralo a él solo y no a su creación. I would go to my room, lock the door, prostrate and cry, saying, God, you know me better than myself. Show me the right way and I will not look back. I will leave everything behind. Allah is our creator and he creates everything and he gives intelligence to people. Rasulullah is Muhammad's peace be upon him. Muhammad is one of the last messengers sent from God. Back here on the Dean Show, giving you some examples of culture and Islam. Now there are, just one more, one more, uh, female uh, mutilation. Female genital mutilation is a... Uh, ancient practice from the times of pharaohs and actually it's something forbidden by the Prophet Muhammad they did use to practice circumcision of both men and women in the time of the Prophet but it was for the women a very small a very just a small cut in the clitoris right that's all that was allowed the Prophet did not allow you know what is known as mutilation female genital mutilation right and that is something the Prophet himself warned against now some Muslim countries practice that but this is something, an example of a culture that actually really goes against the teachings of Islam. So these are another example of things that often Muslims, some Muslims think that this is the religion. It's not the religion. It's got nothing to do with the religion. And so how can we give us the formula that now there are some things that are acceptable with culture? We talked about some, okay, some foods that I mentioned mm -hmm. and other things that are good. But there are some things now that conflict with acts the, of worship. The simple formula is to know what the Qur'an says, to know what the Prophet Muhammad said, and to know what his companions were upon. Once you understand that, once you have that knowledge, then you'll begin to fit into the framework and to see what is really culture and really what is really the religion, and what are the bounds and the boundaries between the two. So it does mean that you need to, excuse me, you need to know, you need to understand, you need to study the source texts of the religion. That's the, the Qur'an, the Sunnah, according to the understanding of the early Do we generation. need a basis? Do we ask questions, say, what's the proof, the evidence? Exactly, because this is what's important, right? You, it, Islam is not based upon, oh, 
such and such said so, I saw someone doing this, oh, I saw some Muslims doing that, I saw some, I saw some Muslims doing whatever. You can find Muslims drinking. It's very clear from the Quran that drinking is haram, right? You find Muslims committing acts of terrorism, but you find it very clear from the teachings of Prophet Muhammad that terrorism is something that is not allowed in the religion of Islam. So what Muslims do is not a proof. Proof is what God says and what the Prophet says. So what the verbatim word of God says, the Quran, mm -hmm. what the last and final messenger said to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the companions, the best of generations, yep. how they understood it. That's right. Now that is the criteria, and with that said, we're coming to an end. Last closing and comments and suggestions, and where people can also get a hold of you if they need to. You can find out more about our organization, www.ira.org.uk. And you can contact me through that website there. Thank you very much again for being with us. Thanks, Eddie. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And that's another episode of The Dean Show. Thank you for tuning in every week. We are here, same time, same channel. We also have the new Dean Show radio show. You can go to the DeanShow.com blog section. You can also pick up volume one, volume two, volume three of the DVD that's of most of our shows that we encourage you to get. Get them in the MSAs, get them in the masjids, and share this message of peace. Peace acquired by submission to the will of the one God. Share this message with the world. Get the DVDs and tune in every week to the Dean Show. Until next time, peace be unto you. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone.